Hey, it's Josh, and you're listening to The Other Show, a Rebel One podcast. So guys, my problem was is that I was too cocky. Uh, people told me well in advance to take care of it, but I didn't, right? And and I mean, this is in regards to my cat. Yeah. And And, and by the way, are we a cat podcast? We are now. Yes, we are now, as of the airing of this episode. Because, listen, Spencer, about three weeks ago, you peed on your cat. Uh, spoiler alert, them. go listen to that episode for context. <laughs> uh, yeah, how many cats do you have? I have three cats. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> You You have enough Did cats you not know this, for Kenny? all of us. Did you not know I had three? Uh, I just, I kind of thought... You had maybe 17 running around. <laughs> no. Okay. So. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. So not to, to interrupt you. We have the three. We have Laverne and Shirley, who are our outside barn cats. Never had a mouse problem, even though we're next to fields. Yeah. And then we have Ethel, which is indoor outdoor. My mother-in-law, when we got married, no cats. Last time I counted, 32. What? Your mother-in-law has 32 cats? 32. But she lives on the 69 Ranch, right? Yes. By the way, welcome to the other show where you need to listen to every episode to get the inside jokes or references of what we're talking about. Uh, The 69 Ranch is a real thing. Yeah. (laughs) And so she they're all like uh, outdoor mousers, right? No. You can't have 32 cats. They're all outdoor cats. They're not mousers. So what happens when you live on a farm? And I'm sure the Holmgrens can back me up. If you live on any sort of property, people will randomly drop cats off at your house. <laughs> and they're not spayed, they're not neutered, and eventually you have a farm. Like a cat yeah. farm. with like furbies or whatever they are. Furries. <laughs> furbies. Now the problem is... No, no, <laughs> are you thinking of the Star Trek reference right now? Yeah, but I botched it. Tribbles. Those are tribbles. <laughs> it's tribbles. It's not the furries, the, the weird perverts who walk around... Like tigers. You can tell how much of a nerd I am. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I do think you probably have some furries that have come around the 69 Ranch. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Josh was even thinking about Furbies. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a different kink altogether. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, a farm full of cats. We're due for a small farm accident, if you know what I mean. Oh, man. Okay, well, good. that's a good segue because that's where I'm at right now. I spent this weekend... Um, kind of afraid of my cat because she's making some noises. We've had her for about 10 months now. Oh, no. And she is making some noises, which you'll probably hear as we're recording. And it sounds like like this. 24-7. And then she does this little crawl where she gets really low to the ground and her butt goes straight up in the air. And like she's, and I hate to say it, she presents it because I'm the only creature she knows. She looks back at me and presents <laughs> her little cat bun. And I go, hey, Misty, take it easy. Okay? Because we, we have this, mil- by the way, and so the context is she's in heat. And I should have known because everyone who's owned a cat says, oh, you have a cat? Go get it fixed. You know, Bob Barker's been telling me my entire life to take care of this. And you haven't listened yet. And I haven't listened. I'm like, oh, it will be fine. I called once and they're like, yeah, it's like three months to get in. I'm like, oh, that's a long time. See ya. <laughs> okay. I'll just and do now... it myself. Kenny. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Has she never been in heat before? You've had her 10 months. Yeah, no, this is it. Because uh, I looked it up on like WebMD and uh... <laughs> she has cancer too. <laughs> she has right? cat cancer. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, apparently they, uh, I don't know if it's all cats. She's only an indoor cat, but apparently in the winter months, cats aren't as in heat as much. Uh-huh. And so this is kind of it for her. And there's been a male cat that's been like stalking around the front door and he'll do his own like. Uh-huh. And we'll both look out the window like Josh does, like neighborhood watch. <laughs> like, oh, there he is again, <laughs> that scoundrel. And she's been like really interested. Right. But she's not an outside cat at all. So this entire weekend for three days straight, I'm getting her staring at me like, let me outside. Please let me outside. And I'm like, is she in pain? Once again, WebMD is like, no, she's not in pain. She's just calling all the boys to the yard. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a hussy. It is like, I almost am like calling male Tomcats to just come over and take care of this because it's getting worrisome. Like she's making some real weird noises and she's rolling on the ground all the time. I I put a pile of catnip down just to kind of drug her and take the pain away. And, uh, (laughs) 
it, it didn't work. She got a little more uh, irritable. Like, poor frustrated cat. And I know, I know it's my fault. Okay. If it makes you feel better, Kenny. Yeah. We had the same problem. I don't want to, I'm not trying to one up you here. Okay. Because we went through the same thing with, with Ethel, where we kept getting told to take her to get in heat. And we were like, yeah, well, we'll do it. It's just forever out. Yeah. We'll get it taken okay. care of. Now, Stephanie, I'm sorry. I'm throwing you under the bus here. Um, I get a text one day while I'm at work saying Ethel's acting really weird. I mm-hmm. think there's something wrong. And I get home and she's doing everything that you're talking about. Making the noise, walking funny with a little extra sway in the hips. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yo, I know. And, and I then it. when she presents, you know, the tail kinks like all the way to the yes. side. Yeah. So <laughs> this is where it gets I'm learning worse. so much about cats right now. <laughs> you know, that's why it's Too a podcast much. for about I, cats. It's a pod- yeah. podcasts. Yeah, it's podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so I I didn't know what was going on, so we text my bishop. Not because, you know, it's a chastity Wait, because you felt cats. guilty? <laughs> <laughs> Need some but... divine help here. <laughs> will, you talk to our, will you talk to our child, our fur child, <laughs> about the law of chastity? No, our bishop... Cat chastity? <laughs> our bishop owns a petting zoo. <laughs> it just gets better. <laughs> this does get better. So I text him. I was like, hey, is there a vet in the area you recommend? Stephanie thinks she broke Ethel's tail. Ah, uh, okay. And he's like, yeah, no problem. So we're doing that, and I'm like, no, it can't be a broken tail because she's moving it from side to side. Like, there's yeah. no way she broke that vertebrae at the base of the tail, and she's feeling this good. Um, I was like, Stephanie, I, th- I think the cat's in heat. So I text the bishop. <laughs> um, <laughs> Once again, okay, go on. What, what, are, what are the symptoms of a cat in heat? <laughs> so and- I went to the internet. You text your bishop <laughs> <laughs> about animal mating rituals. <laughs> These are for the strength of youth for animals. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wrong. Yeah. I take that back. For okay. the strength of youth. <laughs> oh, well played. Oh. Slow clap, sir. All right, Josh, were you giving me some advice? Because I kind of need it. Yes, I, I was going to give you some advice. I was going to. I was going to do you a solid. Okay. So, I am officially now a cat dad. I guess you could say. I got. Two male cats. So once again, let me bring them over. Show. Let yeah. me bring them over. No, they're fixed. Listen, and they're declawed. Oh. What does that mean? So they're two they're male just, cats. They're, they're well, I don't know. Tag team? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've ever owned Listen, cats. I think I'm your a dog. cats need I'm to a... talk to Spencer's bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, a dog. I, I'm I'm a dog person. I've never had a pet cat, so I'm going in blind here. I just figured, you know, guy no, cats. I actually, as a very protective parent right now, shame on you, sir. Shame on you. <laughs> but I have really good names for him too. Which which are are you gonna are you gonna name them officially right now? Yes. Yeah, so officially, okay. they are named because they're brother cats, right? Yeah. Walt and Roy. Oh, Man. the Disney brothers, the the Disney cats. We even have an Instagram account. Of course you do. You oh, man. Of We're all pathetic. the people. Yeah, you would. I mean, if that that Instagram account is going to be hot stuff. <laughs> Disney and cats. That's all the Internet is. Let's be honest. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a true so. story. No, but Spencer, same thing. Like I was trying to go to the gym the other day and uh, I was in the park. Thought, I'm like, I really don't want to be here right now. And I'm about to walk in. My youngest or my oldest daughter texts mm-hmm. me and goes, Dad, please come home. Please. Misty's acting really weird. I think she ate something bad. She's rolling on the ground. She seems really uncomfortable. And I'm like, I think she's in heat. Once, Kind of like you. Yeah. I'm like, I'll get home and I'll call the bishop. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, she. I'm like, I think she's in heat. No, Dad, I think there's something wrong with her. So, of course, I came home. I'm like, well, that gets me out of the gym. That's fine. And, uh, you know, and she was doing all the, the weird. Uh-huh, just uh-huh. constantly. And, yeah, she is. She's peeing everywhere I think yet? she's coming out of it. She's coming out of it, and I'm making an appointment tomorrow uh, because it's the right thing to do, and it will it will help keep my sanity on those weekends because it was worth nuts. the extra fifty bucks to do it while they're in heat. Wait, what? You really? they can do it while they're in heat. You just it's more expensive. That feels rude. Yeah, um, right? Talk about a cock block, Kenny. <laughs> did your cat not pee everywhere? 
Uh, no, actually. Ours, ours That's did. That's usually fact, the male cats, I thought. I don't recommend. Yeah, the male cats, I know, spray. No, the cats, the, the females will too. You might want to check your house. I have been. I've been checking every day. I will be no. looking in every nook and Get a pregnant now. woman over to your house. I guarantee she'll find it. I probably also <laughs> smell your clothes. You probably smell like cat pee. Yeah, no, the favorite places were in like Stephanie's fabric closet um, on Hazel's play toys and the ball pit. Wow. Um, it got so bad. And, and I don't recommend doing this with your cat uh, or your children. But we ended up just putting her in the shed, <laughs> like for two weeks. She was in the shed. Uh, I'm learning so much. Hey, I would like to ask everyone listening if you have advice other than yeah, uh, here's a good vet or whatever, but better than our advice, please yeah. share it with us. Yeah, we, we we obviously need some, especially me. <laughs> Josh, you were trying to start this. <laughs> I can't even I can't even Josh. Hey, you know what though? Let me just let me just tell you a, a quick little story here. So, I left my my boxer Roxy mm-hmm. with with my family when I got married. And my honeymoon night, I I get a call, like just walked into the hotel room, right? Get a phone call from my 10-year-old niece, frantic, right? She's like, "Josh, Josh, something's wrong with Roxy. She's bleeding. She's bleeding. <laughs> we got home from the reception and she's bleeding. I'm like, what, what, what happened? Did she get into something or whatever? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know. Let me give you the phone to, to, to my mom. And, and my sister gets on the phone. She's like, Roxy's in heat. I'm sorry <laughs> that my daughter called you. Have a good honeymoon. <laughs> Click. <laughs> and did you turn to Marianne and say, Roxy's not the only one. I just looked at Marianne and went, hubba hubba. Uh, Kenny, I'll give you the advice, though, that my bishop gave gave me. Uh, <laughs> We're going back to First this, huh? Yeah, you're really <laughs> laying into this. You're going to go no, blind? Uh, yeah. Like, what is it? Kenny. What? Front hmm. rubs or back rubs in the front room lead to front rubs oh, in the back okay. room. And two... Um, your cat may look like it's out of heat and go right back in. So there's a narrow window of time if you want to get it fixed in between heats. It can yeah, be. Yeah, I actually little... hear it's it's a week. Yeah, it's a week between. And if you miss that window, you're screwed. And look, look, I think we've all been there. I mean, I I feel that in my life, but I don't whine and put my butt up in the air. You know? Okay, I whine. <laughs> you do whine. But... And my butt does kind of get go up in the air. I was so, gonna say, yeah. let let your dates be the judge of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just because I'm spraying, but it's axe a body spray, so keeps the females yeah. away. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> All right, mercy. All right. Oh, you know what? I feel like the first 10 minutes of this show could have easily just been settled by a quick Google. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. But hey, hey, here's a really good segue. Uh, considering I'm asking for advice, uh, Josh, where could they leave that advice? Well, besides all of our social media accounts, there's a much better way that you can uh, converse, talk, m- talk amongst yourselves, whatever. We have a new Facebook group. Yeah, we do. The other group, aptly named. Uh, yeah, so go join. All you have to do, just just search the the other group on Facebook. Um, answer a couple of questions. Promise that you'll be on your best behavior. And yeah, you're a part of the uh, I don't know, the other community. You could be the other family, the other friends. I don't know. One thing I'm really loving so far is uh, the uh, yeah. It's basically Facebook Messenger chats we've been having. Uh, just with some yeah. other chats. Yeah, there's there's a lot of features, actually, that I kind of discovered when I was setting this up with these chat features, with all these other kind of fun things that I have not taken advantage of in other Facebook groups that I've I've been an admin of, a sure. couple running uh, groups and that. But mm-hmm. um, this has been a lot of fun because we, we kind of have different groups that we can kind of chat. We've had just general episode chats. We've had, what are you watching? Which I totally stole from bacon sale. Hey, it works. Hey, we invented it. So I I mean, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we also have sports talk because, you know, there is a corner of the internet that actually does like to talk about sports, even if the majority of us don't understand it. Yes, but, but you got it. Um, yeah. 
Actually, the majority on this podcast understand sports. What's wrong with you, Kenny? What do you? Uh, oh, okay. True. Take it easy. <laughs> Junior jazz is probably about the extent of it, but you know. Yeah, nineties basketball. I am all about. Oh yeah, Come on. You, you got John me Starks, man. John Starks, <laughs> Akeem Olajuwon, <laughs> Anthony Mason. Yeah. <laughs> You just thrown out names. Yeah. Are you yeah. looking at basketball cards right now? Kendall Gill. No, Kendall Gill. Rex <laughs> Chapman, man. Muggsy Ooh. Bogues. Oh, did you Sackley. see if Elton Spencer passed away? Yeah, oh, actually. No. Yeah, he did. Big friend of the show. Um, Felton Spencer. <laughs> I, sure, our show. Yeah, our yep. show. <laughs> no, not yeah, our show. Yeah, we for the Jazz 90, 93 to 96. I remember right? the day that we traded for him, too. Mm-hmm. He was my favorite jazz player. He, uh, we, traded, we traded Mike Brown for him, man. Oh, I mean, okay. that's, mm. yep. but, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, I know that's I'm like, reaction. I'm trying not to nerd out here. Cause I'm like, I could just like throw up jazz facts right now, but uh, no, anyway, these are the type of conversations you can have on the, right. uh, in the other group, but just join, uh, have fun. Also one thing um, that we have done, if, if you want to post, if you have something that you want to share, if you have community events that you want to share, uh, you can you can post uh, what you would like in that group. We do not have post approval, so uh, you don't have to wait forever. Um, but yeah, share share with with us anything you wish that uh, the community would want to know. Uh, mm-hmm. You want to share, so it's your group. Perfect. Or you could call Josh. I mean, yeah, that spe- out there. Spe- speaking of calling Josh, yes, eh. Hey, yeah. we, we do have a couple of uh, voicemails, so All right. uh, should let's we, hear them. Uh, should we play them? Let's do it. Hey, Josh, this is KP. I just, you know how I love to leave you long voice messages that you have to just sit there and listen through? Well, this one here I actually want you to share with Spencer because after hearing uh, Spencer's uh, dirty things he does to food or whatever, I uh, want you to share this with him and have him try to make this. This comes from... It's called Summer Salad Pie, and it comes from Betty Crocker's Dinner in a Dish Cookbook, 1965. And uh, here's some highlights from the recipe. First of all, it's all going to go into a cheese pie shell. The cheese pie shell is, of course, flour, salt, uh, some shortening, mixed with sharp cheddar cheese, and then you know, made into a little uh, shell. But here's where it gets interesting. This is where you're going to take some lemon-flavored gelatin, one package, put it in in boiling water. You're going to stir in one can of tomato sauce, one tablespoon of vinegar, and a bunch of seasonings, which would be a half teaspoon of salt, a few drops of Worcestershire sauce and Tabasco sauce, and a dash of pepper. Then, when that's uh, mixed in, you chill it until slightly thickened. Then you're going to fold in uh, half a cup of chopped uh, celery and a half a cup of uh, pimento stuffed olives and uh, a quarter cup of chopped onion. You're going to pour these into the cooled pie cheese pie shell and chill it thoroughly. When you're done, you're going to scoop the tuna salad on top of that. Now, the tuna salad recipe is, of course, one can of tuna drained with a teaspoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of minced onion, a cup of dried celery, some salt and paprika. And then what you're going to do is mix all that into taste, chill, but just before serving, Drain that and mix it with just enough mayonnaise to moisten. <clears throat> a few things. One, KP, don't give me any more recipes until you give me the recipe for beef bulgogi. And two, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that was just a recipe for a quesadilla jello salad with ketchup. Did you ever watch the new Mickey Mouse Club on the Disney Channel? Uh, with Blash? Hot dog! That no, one? No, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm talking like late 80s, early 90s. That's not new. But they had Justin Timberlake. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what it was called. Oh. oh and they had okay. Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears. And yeah, the Mouseketeers. Yeah, back, the Mouseketeers. Back in the era, yeah. Yes. yeah. No, so they they would have, I think it was like Friday or something like that, one of the day, theme days, they would make these concoctions and they, they would dare each other to eat them or whatever. 
That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Wait, so KP is just like trying to get started yes. a weird cooking segment. Yes, he's, he's but he's like, daring Spencer to try it out. He he's like the the head the old musketeer that's trying to get all the young musketeers. Uh, I wouldn't say old. He's youthful. Come I mean, on, he is youth, no. youthful, but you know. Look, uh, let me explain my my comment. The recipe for tortilla is flour, water, shortening, or some sort of fat. Throw some cheese in there. That's the crust. The recipe for ketchup is vinegar, tomato sauce, uh, Worcestershire. Salt, sugar, spices. He just described taking a tortilla shell or a quesadilla, filling it with jello pudding, and then putting ketchup on top. I don't know how to feel about that. I do. That is disgusting. Even I won't touch that. <laughs> so he's wait. No man shall stand when they head into leftover land. Is is he trolling you? Or is know. this something that like maybe KP does this really well? No, there is a subreddit called Old Recipes. Yeah, that that is stuff like that where it's like hot dogs and Jello or gelatin, like it's weird things like that. But this this is this is par for the course for KP. I know he's coming out with a podcast soon, um, called the Rebel One Cantina, and they talk about things like Western pleasure. <laughs> oh, you know, is that is that another club that we were talking about <laughs> the other week? There's like the northern one, and then the southern one, and now there's the western. All I know pleasure. is that. That Brian Booth did this up at USU. I don't want to know what happens in Logan. <laughs> Stays, Stays in Logan. Logan. It sounds like a like a horrible remake of Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? All right, we have we have, we have one more here. Can you please shorten that message, please, please, please? So long. Anyway. Um, it's crew again. I've got another book recommendation for you guys. Hope you like these keep coming to you. Um, the book is, it's actually a trilogy of books. It's the Red Rising Trilogy by Pierce Brown. It's a science fiction uh, series that takes place centuries in the future on a terraformed Mars. It's totally accessible to everybody I've recommended it to. So um, I, I think you guys like it. It, it has a slow acceleration, so give it time. But once it breaks the gravity well, it continues the high-speed adventure through books two and three. Um, if you like Star Wars, if you like uh, The Martian, if you like it, science fiction in general, you'll, like, you'll love this. Um, and if you just like adventure and intrigue, it's great. Um, I would like to say the first book is like a mashup of Ender's Game, Game of Thrones, and The Hunger Games but way better than all three. So, um, oh, and also I know that Kent will like this. This book has stakes. People you like, people, characters you will grow to re really like and enjoy, um, they'll die. You'll be mad at the author because someone you like will die. Um, not the main character, of course, spoiler alert, but it's a great book. And the audio by Tim Gerard Reynolds is fantastic. And I would like to uh, point out that any book that Tim Gerard Reynolds narrates is elevated by him. So um, I often search for new books just by looking up what he's read lately. So um, anyway, keep up the good work, guys. Love the other show. Talk to you later. Okay, we will shorten Josh's message if you guys shorten yours. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love the longer just one. Just kidding. We actually love the calls. I, I do want to say thank you for the book recommendations, crew. <laughs> Keep them coming. I am almost done with the evolution. Okay. Yeah, I want your thoughts so, when you're done. I actually have the red, the first book of Red Rising trilogy uh, on Audible right now. I've had it for like two years. I just haven't started it, but it, it seemed pretty captivating. So I will get started on it. I'm a I'm a horrible like reader. I shouldn't say I'm uh, not a horrible reader. Well, I mean, here I am saying I listen to these, right? So so Wait. am I. Like, what was it, episode two or three or, like, negative ten of our show that we decided that reading yeah. was listening? That that it does count? It does count. But, Josh, like, what are you doing instead, like, while you're in the car uh, or exercising? Well, I'm I, well. If, if I'm in the car, I'm either on the phone with Spencer or with Kenny P complaining about, you know, HOA stuff. Uh, no joke. Um, mm. and, or I'm usually listening to music. Okay. Um, I, or podcasts. I like bacon sale. Yeah, um, I'll take it. But yeah, as far as audiobooks go, 
it's harder for me to kind of get into them. Um, I've tried. I've tried even doing it while I'm running. Um, yeah, well, running, you need the you need the energy. But see, I, I just like to just read. But the problem is, is usually when I'm able to sit down and read, I fall asleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's so, my biggest problem. So one cheat that I use, and this is like the nerdiest cheat ever, but if I play a lot of like open world video games, mm-hmm. uh, there's not a lot going on with the soundtrack or dialogue. And so I'll just put on an audio book huh. to kind of go over the top. And considering I'm sitting there for, you know, an hour and a half to two hours at a time, I'm like, yeah, that takes out a chunk of the book. So mm-hmm. that's that's if I didn't have that and considering I don't really commute to work yeah. as much as I used to, uh, that is like the only way I have a chance to take that time. I like more of the the long drawn out podcasts, I think, like the historical yeah. stuff. Yeah, but, I get that. Yeah. No, I just need to try it. I mean, plus, the, the books I'm reading right now are kind of all the boring stuff because... All family history. <laughs> that is boring stuff. I'm a genealogist at heart. What can I say? Well, speaking anyway. of family history, I uh, I saw a movie this week about history. <laughs> <laughs> that's the greatest oh, segue wow. ever, right? That's, that's a stretch. <laughs> it was go on. So I saw Adam Driver's new film, 65. Okay. So mild spoilers, but not anything that's going to ruin the film um, in what I'm about to say. So if you don't want this B movie with a budget ruined for you or spoiled, maybe skip the next, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, right? Be careful with what you say because we cannot afford to lose to lose our listeners over what you're about to say, especially Allison Fairbanks Gall. <laughs> and she's a huge fan of Adam Driver. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I don't know if any anyone else is going to go see this movie. I, you know what? Allison will love this film because this is paternal Adam Driver at its max. Okay. That's that's a king. So if you want to call Adam Driver daddy, yeah, this is your film. <laughs> so <laughs> this is actually the perfect film for them to film during the pandemic because it has a cast of four people. You've got Adam Driver playing a space pilot, like a 747 passenger pilot, but for space. You have the person that plays his daughter, his wife that gets all of five minutes of screen time, the entire movie. And then you have the other survivor of a plane crash. Okay. Okay. So the, the premise of the film is, and they established this, this moves really, really quick. In the first five minutes of the film, they established Adam Driver's a pilot for passenger space. Um, this is set way in the past on another planet. And he is hired to do a two year mission. And they tripled his salary so that he could afford the treatment for whatever random space sickness that his daughter has. <laughs> okay. Okay. You saw so, it so far. Mm hmm. This is how the movie moves. Like, I legit, they're standing on a beach, and he's like, I'll be gone for two years. I might, my, that's my Harrison Ford, <laughs> Adam Driver. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, kid, I'll yeah. be back with the cure. <laughs> His is more monotone. But, yeah, he, uh, I'll be gone for two years. And she's like, well, <laughs> like the, you tried again. Yeah, that's so failed. Like I'm like, we know I'm not a base. I'm not even gonna try. But they tripled your salary so that we can feel our daughter. So he says goodbye to his daughter, and then the next uh-huh. scene is him crashing into an asteroid and landing on a planet where he goes and recovers the only other other survivor, which is this girl about the age of his daughter, who does not speak the same language because their translators are broken. And there's okay giant footprints all over and they don't know what they are and then it shows the title and says 65 million years ago on earth dun 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 this is lost in space or land of the lost Mm -hmm. but with adam driver because they landed on lost in space land of the lost in space yeah so the next scene they 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 established that he needs to go find the other half of his ship ship that broke in half that landed on top of this mountain so that they can get off the planet and away from the dinosaurs. But they look in the sky and there's an anomaly. <gasps> it's the asteroid that destroys the dinosaurs. That's some mild spoiler. What? Yeah. So now he Why didn't and- you take Josh and I to this movie? This seems right up our alley. I know. I would have jump scared a, a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, you would have. I went with Brian Booth. It was we had a good time. We we ate some wieners. That's all we're gonna hear about that. 
But no, so the, the film gets right to it, and it is all about the journey of Adam Driver and this girl that he can't really communicate with, who is now his surrogate daughter, racing time, the asteroid, and the dangers of the dinosaurs to get to this this spaceship and get off the planet. Okay. Uh, how are the effects? So, and this is, yeah, we'll get into the effects now. Honestly, everything looks fantastic except for the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are probably the weakest part of the that, film. That's the one that's thing. That's what I wanted to know about. <laughs> that's the one thing you, you got to nail down. Like, they, So you're like, Adam Driver, he looks great. Oh, he does a fantastic job. He looks like he cares about this movie. <laughs> He did a great job. And then the, and then next scene, here comes a pterodactyl that looks like it uh, ran into the birdcage <laughs> a couple of times. It's claymation. Yeah. <laughs> or De- Denver the last dino- dinosaur comes skating in. <laughs> no, this is an unfair comparison because Jurassic Park nailed it. Just copy right? them. This is not quite as good as Jurassic World. Oh, okay. So it's not terrible. But they're the weakest Wait, part of this film. But is it be- so? It's better than Jurassic World two and three, but not quite as good as Jurassic World one. Everything yes. is better than Jurassic Park it's three. Jurassic World two and three. No, they kept going downhill. Yeah, they did. Like, so sixty five is comparable to those bad movies. Yeah, but still yeah. enjoyable because it has dinosaurs, and even though they don't look very good. It. The reason <laughs> I, I'll tell you this is enjoyable is because they do a really good job of balancing. An intimate story, like low stakes, intimate, or high stakes, low. Like, it's not apocalyptic. The only people that are going to be killed or that you care about in this film are Adam Driver and this child, Koa. The dinosaurs. No, you know they die. So it's got the apocalyptic stakes because, you know, dinosaurs all get wiped out. But it's only threatening these two people that you care about. Um, Spencer, I'm going to ask you to spoil something for me, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, when they escape the planet, because I'm sure they do, is there a dinosaur aboard their ship? <laughs> no, there's no sequel. No. Oh, okay. Uh, say no more, sir. That is say one no of the more. things I enjoy about this film is this is a standalone film. Adam Driver completely carries it. Um, you could tell that he's more invested in this than he ever was in Star Wars. Um, is that is that so? Really? No, really. Really, you can tell that he's he's actually enjoying himself. Did he, did he take his shirt off and then wear the high waisted pants? No, but you know what I did notice, and I'm, I'm this is an Adam Driver trope. Anytime he is in a sci fi movie, he gets stabbed in the side. I I don't know what to say, but okay, okay, I, don't I have no idea. Every that. Star Wars yeah. film, he gets hurt in the side, <laughs> like that's and he's you know he's hitting the side, but this happens in this film too. Okay, so the most of Adam Driver's barrel chest and abdomen you see are when he pulls some metal shrapnel out of his stomach. Okay, that's for Allison. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. This would How be, many times he, does he take off his shirt? That's all we need never, to know. Never. Never. But he's very paternal in this film. So, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Who would I recommend this film to? This is great if you want a good film to stream at home with your kids. Okay. Or if you Perfect. need a movie night Wait, with where kids? it's like kids 13 and up. It's definitely okay. PG-13. Um, just How for graphic are the di- do, do the dinosaurs eat anybody or... I, well, I guess there's only like two people. No, on, on the but planet. there are some intense moments. Uh, spoilers. Again, we're talking slight spoilers. There is a scene in a cave that's very, very claustrophobic. Um, even I got a little claustrophobic watching it. And then there is a face melting scene, not quite on par with Raiders of the Lost Ark, but it's like if Barney was there. And open the art. Okay, I'm in. That's all you have to say. Okay, that's what. You, that's how your review should have started. Yeah. <laughs> so Barney's lost thank you very Raiders. much. It's too bad that like when he crashed his his spaceship that he didn't like like throw off the trajectory of the comet so right. that the it, dinosaurs, it dinosaurs could still be here. Uh huh. That'd be a cool movie. No, it would have been even more fitting if he knocked it off to Earth and he was the cause. And then Chris Ooh, Pratt comes deep. in and uh-huh. starts talking to all the dinosaurs. No. Great movie, Pr- Chris. Pratt. Yeah, it'd be great. Mm-hmm. That's Chris, the sequel right there. Chris Pratt is one of the passengers that was in cryo. Sometime how he survived, and then he wakes up another passenger, and then they oh. came the dinosaurs. And they call it sixty four. Anyway, <laughs> I was thinking sixty nine. All right, uh, no, nice, no, sir. <laughs> we already talked about the ranch, Spencer. All right. Wait, okay. That's not how well, so that yeah. Been. So streaming. Hey Josh, so streaming. Yeah, Josh, we'll stream it. Streaming. We'll have a little movie yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. The whole the whole film takes place within like 48 hours. 
on the show gotcha. or in the movie. So okay, it's a quick, it's a tight right. film. Um, watch it at home or take if you got teenage kids and you need something to watch on a weekend for a matinee. This would be a fun matinee right. film. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say it sounds like one of those kind of movies that you would you know watch. You just like stumble upon like on TNT or TBS on a lazy Saturday afternoon. Yeah. So yeah, this would have been on yeah. what was that? The Man Network or whatever. That showed all the James Bond Spike Spike TV uh, Spike TV yep. yeah this would have been on Spike TV the, the Man Network <laughs> I don't know though but to be honest with you I mean uh, we've talked about this in the past in past in, uh, episodes I just I, I don't watch a lot of of network TV mainly because I I just stick to a lot of the streaming and especially lately it's been Disney Plus and Dance Moms <laughs> like is is that my fault. Josh, uh, if so, I'd like to apologize. It, it may be slightly uh, your your fault because my my daughters were watching it, and they've I think they've seen it before. And this show started I think 2010, and and I've seen a couple memes online about the show or, or funny uh-huh. gifts. So I I watched a few episodes with them, and I was like, mm. I was like, guys, you got to watch the the show. There's a character that's mm. very reminiscent of a mutual, and um, and so Josh, how are you feeling about it? Uh. Like sometimes I, I I have to turn it off like after two or three episodes. That's a lot that I can take of Abby. Right, exactly. Like she is completely overbearing, and like I just look at her and I'm like, oh my gosh, like why why isn't anybody else running from the studio? Like I would just yeah. I would leave as soon as possible, but I can't stop watching it, guys. Yeah. You you got me to watch the first episode. Like, I was <laughs> yes. in I was in bed last night and Stephanie was laying down. He's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Kenny and Josh told me to watch this. I have to I have to watch this." So I watched the first episode and I I did not see what you were talking about until like halfway through the film or the the first episode. Yeah. Where right. The, the mom gets. I can't believe I'm saying this. Where the mom gets chased <laughs> out of the studio. <laughs> Yeah. Basically, if you say anything negative to or about this dance, uh, I guess she's a teacher. She owns the studio. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, she is the kingpin. She's the mafia Don, basically. And if you say anything that she doesn't care for, you will be destroyed. Well, and it's, and, it's fascinating to watch because yeah. she she pits like the the moms who disagree with her against the, the moms who are very much like, you know, Team Abby. Yeah, and and even the girls against their own parents, and I'm just sitting here. And I'm like, well, oh my gosh, like this yeah. is just this is a total like just toxic situation. Oh, for sure. But I can't stop watching. <laughs> and Freaking you know, reality TV. What's interesting is at the end or near the end when you know you've got her, her inner circle around her, mm-hmm. and she she just sits there in public, yells at one of these moms. For yeah. taking care of her daughter and like everything's okay, right. their kids, you know, the, the the bandana fell in front of the face while they were dancing. Everything turned out okay, and she's like destroyed. I'm like, oh, I feel this in my bones, and I <laughs> I had to look up more information I, afterwards. Like I Google searched I, I, yeah, honestly to make yourself feel better because it's been on for about twelve years. Yeah, yeah, I had so. to find out. Like first thing I wanted to know was was this studio really as good as they said it was before they got famous? Yes. Or not. Because basically, it is meant to be this... It's in Pittsburgh, I think, or something like that. Yeah. But an elite studio that you'll have a better chance at winning competitions and having a better future just by being in this studio. Yeah. And the thing is, like, she says, I've made all these stars and, like, everybody I've worked with has become a star. And I've I've got this, like, 30-year career and things like that. It's, they don't name any names of people. Like, if she had actually made people stars and made them famous dancers, wouldn't, wouldn't it be on... Like they say, like this person and this person and this person worked with me. NDAs, man. NDAs. NDAs. Yeah, so many NDAs. Oh, uh, well, so uh, I don't know how much time we have, Josh, but I do have. I, I kind of promised the story last time. Oh, and do we do we want to hear that or I, should I, we? I think we have tease some time. Again? We ha- we okay. have some time here because I, I know that we tease, especially your story, because I've heard bits and pieces of it. Yeah, I've never heard your um, story. Because, you know, we all reconnected a little bit after this happened last year. And so I was like, oh, guys, you know, I got some funny stories I need to catch you up on, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really get the chance to to go into this. So, you know, 
Uh, all I'm asking mm-hmm. is for the parts that you've heard, jo- Spencer, I don't know if you know much, but Josh, for the parts you've heard, just lie to me and pretend you've never heard it before, okay? <laughs> okay. I've, I've had, had some progress. Laugh. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so, and I'm going to do my best to uh, keep names out of this because I don't want to just be like, oh, let's badmouth people now, right? Yeah. But for anyone that's familiar with the dating history that I've shared throughout the years on previous podcasts, uh, there was someone that I dated like legit five years ago. And uh, it wasn't a, a th- she's a great girl, but it wasn't a great situation for me because I was like six months into being single. I wasn't sure what I wanted. And I kind of walked into this thing because she was like so interesting to converse with. I was like, okay, this is cool. And because I didn't want to judge anyone for how they live their life, I'm like, this situation is fine. But the situation was essentially she was had just broken up with an ex but had but was still living with him okay, okay and i'm sure yeah. people may remember this story i'm remembering mm-hmm. it now and i'm okay. totally judging you no as you should and because you know we dated for like 4 months and there were uh, there's a lot of stories within that particular one and and i'm i'm not saying like she was trying to get me to be polyamorous but it kind of felt that way but um but probably, who knows she probably was uh, Kenny, so, at the end of the first date, did she give you a rose? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was being recorded the whole time. I didn't even know, Spencer. <laughs> so anyways, so that relationship ended uh, yeah, about four months after it began. And, you know, honestly, mm-hmm. she and I are, are friendly. And so, like, I go to, like, movie nights because uh, I got to know that circle of friends around her. And um, uh, uh, anyways... And so I'd see her every like six months or maybe once a year. And it was friendly enough. I was mm-hmm. like, cool, this is just fine. Sometimes she like give me crap about like when we were dating and stuff like that. Great. So I, with that kind of frequency of communication a year ago, and like I said, this is about right before a year ago, right before we connect, reconnected, uh, she sends me this really long Marco Polo. And by the way, Marco Polo, mercy. It's rough sometimes because you have to kind of, get through 20 to 30 minutes of messages sometimes. I don't know if you guys deal with this as well, I but I sure do. Marco Polo. I refuse. Yeah, uh, I haven't men generally don't. Men don't, and I would avoid it like crazy. Okay, so she sends me this Marco kind of out of nowhere. And like, seriously, I, I haven't talked to her in, in a while. And she goes, hey, I have a really funny story slash weird request. So just bear with me. And by the way, this message was about 20, 25 minutes. And so she goes on to tell me this story of her friend says, hey, you should sign up to be on a reality show on TLC. Oh, this uh, is I think it's I think it's right up your alley. And and so this girl, she goes, um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I could I, I guess I'll give the nickname the actress. The actress goes, oh, you know, that's not really for me. I'm not really into, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, but she goes, but I did. She's telling me. But I did apply. And she's like, I just got off the phone with the producer for the station. Really? And it went really, really well. And so he wants me to be on this reality show. And she goes, the reality show is called You, Me, and My Ex. Uh, That's your whole story right there. Right there. (laughs) And so I'm listening to this. I think I was like doing dishes or whatever. Kind of like, what's going on here, right? And so the producer's like, I think your situation is going to work because she does still live with this ex-boyfriend. I think this situation will work uh, really well. We would love to have you on the episodes. Um, would you be okay with this? Would you sign up for it? She says, absolutely. Uh, he says, would your ex-boyfriend, who you c- currently live with, would he be willing to be on the show? She goes, he's a little shy, but yes. And then the producer says, what about your boyfriend? Would he be willing to be on the show? And she says, well, that's kind of a problem because I don't currently have a boyfriend. Uh, and the the producer goes, oh, okay. Well, Dang it. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what we need. That's like the missing key, because otherwise we don't really have anything to do with the concept. And he goes, could you get a boyfriend by the time we filmed? And then she says in this message, that's where you come in. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there, mouth open. And once again, I've known this girl for years and like, you know, we're friendly. And I'm just like, what is she asking me? And, and you know, she says, I know this is weird. I know you're going to say no, but would you possibly be willing to be my boyfriend on reality TV? 
and for a couple months uh they film on weekends and like i said tlc and she goes it would be great for my tiktok career it'd be great for your podcast <laughs> tiktok God, career TikTok career <laughs> I love that you guys are both laughing. I, I try to say it with a straight face. But she goes, this I would be great for... I love that we're laughing for... at that and not your podcast yeah. career. <laughs> I know. Just... Hey, yeah, listen. We, we got one, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and so, I, you know, and I'm sitting there and I go, okay, I'm going to have to respond to this. So I reach back out and I say, hey, that is the craziest story. That's really funny. I go, in truth, uh, I'm going to have to say no. In short, uh, I just... I can't lie. Like we wouldn't be dating. I wouldn't want to go on there or go on Instagram and have all these weird TLC fans follow me on Instagram. Be like, Oh, he's dating so-and-so and and this is what I'm watching. And this is, and like, I'd have to like lie for a while up until whatever breakup happened. Right. And, and I said, Hey, if the show was them wanting to interview people that you've dated and say like maybe reasons why it didn't work because of your living situation, sign me the freak up. Like, I will do the show. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't at this age. Like, when I was back then, you know, I was fine. And honestly, if they were filming back then, the stories I would have had or, like, frustrations or whatnot, I would have gone nuts. But now, I'm kind of like, whatever. People are going to live their lives. That's fine. I'm not here to judge. Right? And so, it'd it'd actually be hard for me to fake it and be like, yep, so crazy. That they live together, and that's that's how it is. Like I kind of would be a little more passive about it. Uh, let's be honest. Let's. Uh, it's probably good timing that uh, you told me that initially, because if I hadn't been dating, well, slashed engaged, yeah, at that time, I'd totally be on board of that. <laughs> wait, wait, you would do? It? <laughs> I'm like, get me on TLC, man. I, I'd want to. I'd no. want to meet. Like, I would. I would go to all the TLC parties. No. Like, I would Listen, go hang out with Doctor. I want to meet. The would, guy who washes his hair with mayo. What's his name? Like Big Ed or something oh, like that? Oh, like the 600-pound life. Like I would, I'd want to go see Dr. Oz. I'd want to go. Uh, I would want to go hang out with like the Born This Way. Have you seen that one? <laughs> no, oh, my no. gosh. They're, no, they're, they're people. They're these young adults who, who have um, Down syndrome. And they okay. are the coolest kids. Like I'm like every time I watch an episode, I'm like, I want to be your friend. Because it's So just... it's not one of those shows that's insulting people no. or like trying to get all the drama like 90 Day Fiance. N- no, no. Like they it's following their their life, following kind of their hopes and dreams in LA. So a lot of them yeah. come to try to get, you know, into acting like everybody else. And it just follows them around and it's just it's the most heartwarming like guilty pleasure, you know, uh, you know, series that you'd ever want to watch. But no, like, right, man, Josh. TLC. I just, oh, I would, I would, I would be at all those parties if I was on TLC. Wait, man. you're so they have TLC parties? You think? I'm sure they do. <laughs> no, Josh, I'm sure they look, do. They've got to like a TLC I am, gala. I am looking at right now. I pulled this up while you were talking. The TLC uh-huh. programming. They've mm-hmm. got Milf Manor, Kent. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. that One thousand pound me. sisters. Extreme Sisters, uh, ex- awesome, um, awesome series. I am Mama's Boy, Love in Paradise. Oh no, my big fat fabulous one. life, save my skin. Four weddings. What? This isn't the Learning Channel anymore. This is a trashy Living Channel. And I'm yeah, here for little... it. And I'm here for it, man. <laughs> so wait, I need my um, Sodi. I should, I should have sent you her way, maybe. Uh, well, Cause, 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 but I was already dating Marianne. Okay. Yeah, but well, did, you, did you even float this past Marianne? I already said no to a couple other things, you know, to well, that point. So, I, you know, I kind of well, had to say no. That's the thing. Like, so after I told her no, I was like, I'm really sorry. Uh, and she goes, that's fine. I get it. Like, I knew you'd say no. But he's pretty adamant about me getting a boyfriend. Are you sure there's nothing you can do? It pays about like one to $5,000 per episode. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "That's pretty good." <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's okay. not bad. It's kind of on par with and, with what hey, you Stephanie. Kind of expect. Yeah, I got a question. I got a question, <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> and and then you know it's like they film on the weekends, and and the guy did say because she was like, "Well, you want me to get a boyfriend? Is this fake?" Because reality shows are often faked a uh, bit. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, "We don't want to. We don't want people to be fake, but we do create situations. Like for example, they would kind of." Um, throw together a friend party 
where like a big revelation comes out and they want me to be really upset, for example, or they would uh, have us go on a road trip together and have, or we spend a, a night in a hotel room with two queen beds, right? The three of us. <laughs> yeah. No, and he truly said this. He's like, that's the kind of stuff the show would be like. Um, are you sure you couldn't get him because we need we need to know soon? And I, I did have to tell her no twice. Yeah. And, and once again, I was like, I'm sorry to ruin any sort of reality show chances. I do want to be on a reality show, but this is the wrong one for me. Five years ago, sign me up. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. no. That, right now? I could just picture you in all of those situations. I just picture you <laughs> with like a Diet Dr. Pepper from Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even listen uh, as I'm holding my diet Mountain Dew with a little bit of fresca in there. um, I'd be sitting there like in my confessionals, like, I don't know what the hell's going on here. (laughs) Take us, Josh. (laughs) You have contacts at the Discovery and Travel Channel. Can we pitch a show like The Other Guy starring Kenny, like a dating show? We actually, he's the other guy. So, so not, not to name drop here. My, my brother actually has a production company. Yeah, and so I've I've pitched quite a few shows um, over the over the past several years, and I think that's a great idea. Wait, what's we, a great idea? I don't know where you're going with this. What do you mean? Th- Stop it! What do you mean, Spencer? What was your Kenny, pitch? You're the other guy. <laughs> okay, that's a title. What does that mean? Wait, does that mean I'm literally the other guy in a relationship, <laughs> Spencer? <laughs> now listen, if you're gonna put me in a show. Put me in a forty-year-old bachelor style no, show, okay. which they don't dare bachelor do. Style right? show. You're going to be the other guy. What we're going to do is we're going to get women in a relationship, like a boyfriend, nothing you know too mm-hmm. risque. Spencer, and mm-hmm. they're going to go on seven dates with you, one a day, and then they have to choose between the other guy, Kenny, or no, that's, their boyfriend. That's a show on Netflix. It's called The Ultimatum. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, that exists. Oh, I thought we were onto something here no, because I'm no, just yeah, like, no. TLC will it, eat this up. No, Netflix is already eating it up, and it's trashy. Mm. Do I love it? Yes, I do, but it's trashy. Milf Manor trashy or just trashy? Oh, not not nothing is bad, is bad as Milf Manor. Okay. okay. No, so guys, keep thinking. Keep spinning the wheels a little bit. Uh, I will mm-hmm. take the help. Yes. Um, because but, honestly, you know, then we'll talk to Ben. Because honestly, yes. Like, I, I call him at least, no joke, one or two times a week pitching something. Uh, and once again, uh, everyone jump into the other group, the other chat, and uh, maybe pitch some uh, ideas for us. Yeah. Not for us to even be in, but if I need to be in there, great. That's fine. Specifically, I want to hear dating reality shows for Kenny. Give us, pitch us some ideas. Yes, yes, yes. I am here <laughs> for all of that. <laughs> fine i'll do it oh man because no. like i said i like attention when she told me this there was a part of me that went mm? you know like a little bulldog pug to head to the side like i want to be on tv but i'm like mm, this is not the right way so no it's um i think it needs to happen <laughs> it needs to happen mm-hmm. apparently yeah it does yeah, okay. no, it needs to happen <laughs> uh-huh all right, so save me, guys. Josh, lead us out. Oh, I, yes, I think it is time to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you're still listening, thank you. <laughs> you know, we understand that there are tons of podcasts out there that you can choose from. So the fact that you choose to lend us your ear means a lot to each of us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, guys, we do want to connect with you in any way possible. Whether, whether that is through Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, you can follow the other the other show on any of those social media platforms as well as our personal accounts. Additionally, like we mentioned earlier in today's show, we have a Facebook group, The Other Group. It's a fun little community we hope that uh, you will want to be a, a part of uh, moving forward with the show. So uh, go look that up on Facebook and, and join us. Now, we may be seasoned podcasters, but this is still a fairly new podcast. So please do us a solid by hitting the subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and yes, even YouTube. Subscribing helps others find the other show much easier. So please Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you would love to let us know how much you love the other show, um, please leave us a review. 
we we actually do read each one of them, even the irrelevant one star reviews. Um, now, if leaving a written review isn't your thing, you can always call my voicemail at 801-508-4989 with that comment, that question, that complaint, or even suggestion. Again, my voicemail no- telephone number is 801-508-4989. But guys, just remember that when you're not here listening to us, Remember that you can listen to me on The Party in the Back. You can listen to me on my other show, Bacon Cell. And you can find me on my other show. Bob Barker reminding you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or new. Bye-bye.